Music Online UK. So here's a piece, and I'd like you to answer some general oral test type questions about this piece, okay? So. Okay, now um, something that would be applicable to everyone, but we'll start off with Lavanna. How would you describe the character of that piece of music and what sort of musical elements gave it that character? Um, a bit mysterious. Mysterious, okay. Um, sometimes quite a bit louder. Um, Okay, so mysterious because some bits were a bit quieter and some bits were a bit louder. Okay, Rachel, have you got anything else to add to the character of the piece? So I would say it started in a minor key. Mm -hmm. And the steady and dante walking pace gave the piece a melancholy, almost slow, sad feel. Okay. And uh, the consistent um, tempo added to this as well, and not not much change in dynamics. So maybe there was one dissonant loud clash three quarters of the way through, but otherwise it was pretty consistent. Okay, all right, thank you. Let's um, go on to the style and the well the period that this piece of music comes from so again that's still involved with grade six so Levana, what do you think is the period that this music comes from and why um romantic rachel so i agree i think it was from the romantic Era, but I would say towards the end of the romantic because of the dissonant clash three quarters of the way through the piece. Um, there were simple repetitive melodies, um, use of sustained pedal, frequent use of rubato, um, and a sort of lyrical melody. Okay, right, so you said the use of rubato, did you? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I think there was definitely a rebuttal. If you think of the beginning, it sort of just lingers on the first note quite a lot. Yeah, and then it sort of like accelerates accelerando through the first phrase after that slight pause on the first note. So definitely it's a rebuttal, yeah. yeah. And I agree with both of you that it's from the romantic period. Okay. Right, now, what about Rishab? Can you tell me what you think about the, the texture? Okay, and then Dylan, your question after that will be about the structure. All right, so Rishab first. Everyone else, you can have your microphones off just for now, okay? So texture then for Rishab.
Prisha, tell me about the texture. Okay, for the texture, uh, I think uh, th like there are two voices. So I think for the two voices, uh, it's polyphonic, right? Like, mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the main melody was uh, like in the right hand part only. Uh, uh, I think that's it. Okay, so you've got the main melody in the right hand, but there were polyphonic elements in the second left hand part. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, are you ready then, Dylan? Can you tell us about the structure of this piece? I would say there's two parts. One of them is the start, and the other part is the da na 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 thingy. Okay, two parts. Anyone else want to agree or disagree with that? Rachel, you've turned your microphone on. What do you think? So I think it was made up in two phrases for the beginning, which were repetitive, but it finished with a very dramatic third section. All right. Anyone else got any opinions about the, uh, the structure of this piece? I think it's uh, A, B, like, like structure. An A, B structure. OK, let's, okay. Just, um, let's have a go through it. Okay, so this is what I would call the A section then. And then it just repeats that. So you could call that still part of the A section. Yeah? This is probably what I would call the B section. with a little coda. We're going to do some reverse sight singing, okay? Yeah. Now, instead that? of actually sight singing, we're going to do it in reverse. So you're going to name the notes that I'm playing. Because if you can name them from what you hear, then you should be able to sing them from what you see. Just doing it in reverse, okay? So just to stop any cheating, I'm going to cover my hand. Starting on an E. And I want someone to tell me what notes they hear. Okay, what notes am I playing? Anyone want to volunteer with this question? A. Okay, go. Who's going for it? Me. Is that Dylan speaking? Yeah. Okay, go on, Dylan. So I think it's A. No, it starts on an E. I told you it starts on an E. Oh. It sounds stepwise. Okay, so we'll count the steps. E, D, C. And then it goes B. And then two more notes. I think it goes back to E and then D. No, it goes C, B. Don't right, OK, me. Rachel, can we give me the whole sequence? Yeah. E, D, C, B, C, B. Almost. The last note isn't a B. Oh, Rachel. it must be an A. Yeah, it's an A, OK. Um, can you name the cadence at the end of this phrase? Play it twice. Yeah. 
pressure. It's perfect. It's, it's a perfect cadence. Okay. Now, can you tell me what the last two chords are? So it has to be like tonic and stuff like that. Something like tonic, yeah. But I want two chords at the end. What are the last so two chords? I have to say, is it a tonic or submediate? Something like that, yes. Okay. So what are the last two chords in the order that I played them? Tonic and subdominant? No, I think it's the dominant That's... and the tonic. Yes. Must right. be, must be because it's perfect. You've got no option. Okay, you say there's no option. Dylan, now, would you agree with Rachel that these last two chords are dominant and tonic? Unless it was the dominant seven, but it's definitely a dominant tonic. Right, so Dylan, Rachel's given you an option of a dominant or a dominant seventh. What do you think? So it's perfect. Um, yes. Dominant seventh. You think it's a dominant seventh? That's correct, yes. Now I'll play you with just a dominant and, and here's a dominant seventh. Can you hear that extra richness that the seventh brings? Yeah? Okay. Now, for grade eight, Dylan, I'm going to play you the last three chords and I want you to name the one before the dominant seventh, okay? Here's a key chord again. And now the last three chords. Okay, now we've named the last two, dominant seventh and tonic. What's the chord before those two? This one here, here's your tonic. And your first chord. So it's another tonic. Almost. Well, can you hear the bass notes of this chord? And this chord are the same. Did you hear that? Yeah. So anyone who knows grade five theory should be able to answer this. So what inversion of the tonic chord is it? Three, I mean two. Second inversion, yes, so yeah. it's called 1C. Now you'll find in these oral tests and in, in cadences in general, the progression of 1C to five is very common. You'll hear it all the time, okay?